let's take a look at some circuit breakers, the way they operate, and why, contrary to some of the images you see on the internet, you can't just jam the switch in the on position and hope that it's not going to trip. It will trip inside, and I'll demonstrate that later on, and I'll show you the full tripping mechanism. Interestingly, I've been comparing... Uh, some cheapy Chinese ones from AliExpress to ones that are available locally. British General is what I use here. And uh, the, cert the assembly inside, the whole structure of them is very, very similar. That's quite interesting. But let's start by looking at the trip mechanism. So let's zoom in on this. So these three circuit breakers are rated 16 amp, 32 and 63 amp. The main difference is they're type C incidentally, which means that they require a, a fault current of 10 times to trip them magnetically. The, there's bimetallic strip in here as well, but the main high speed trip uh, is based on a little solenoid here. And you can see that uh, depending on the current rating, the 16 amp in this case has eight turns. I think. Yes, eight turns of that. The 32 amp has three turns and the uh, 63 amp has just over one turn and you think well that's not really going to be able to activate a solenoid and I can show you the little solenoid here's what the little solenoid looks like and it's quite springy it takes a bit of force to operate that um, but when you consider that under the fault conditions this is going to be operating in the case of the 16 amp one it's going to be about 160 amps is required to trigger this mechanically in the case of the 32, it's going to be 320 amps. In the 63, it's going to be about 630 amps. So suddenly those couple of turns are ample for actually creating that force. Now, what's the best thing to do now? I know. I shall show you the inside of the circuit breakers because I've taken some pictures. And interestingly, I'll show you the side by side. The one by British General. Oh, let's zoom out a bit further without getting too far out. And we'll turn this one around this way. And it lets you see the mechanisms inside. So when you compare the two of them, they are pretty similar. In fact, I've noticed that this contact assembly could actually be physically swapped between the two circuit breakers. I'd guess a lot of them are made in similar factories or they're heavily cloned from each other. Things worth mentioning. Do you see, let's look on this light coloured one. Do you see this little thing here? That is the calibration screw. Do you see this strip here is a bimetallic strip and all the current flows through part of that strip. In the case of the 16 amp, it flows almost the full length of the strip. The 32 amp taps about halfway and the 63 amp was right up at the end. So they just vary. They use a fixed number of the bimetallic strips, but they just vary the distance along it to determine how much it gets heated and that heat will spread along. And the way the bimetallic strip trips it is it gradually bends down until it touches this little catch here. The way the magnetic trip trips it is the, the plunger comes up and it hits this end of that so that is the whole trip mechanism there that uh, releases the latch that trips the breaker however this little uh, screw here if we're looking at this if i press down if you watch the bimetallic strip oh uh, let's zoom down this let's zoom down so you can actually see the bimetallic strip if i press down this you can see the bimetallic strip physically moves down just because i'm bending the metal that's literally how they calibrate it. If I zoom back out again and we look, well, let's just look at this. If you look at this, that's a little uh, metal plate with a grub screw through it. And they just fine tune it by just bending that metal down. And that just pre-calibrates the bimetallic strips position before it's been heated up to the point it's just, well, pretty much just touching this. I guess ultimately they must run test current through them in the actual the factory. It doesn't have to be full, like hundreds of volts test current. Uh, it can, it could just be like one volt AC will kind of work for something like this because uh, current is current. Um, now I've shown you those things. Let's take a look at the clear one because it's actually a bit clearer. Literally. So looking at the mechanism here. Oh, I've just dropped the solenoid out. It is very springy, that. It takes a lot of pressure to put that uh, plunger in. But this is normally sat in here, and this is effectively that bit there. 
that can kick up against that little cantilever thing. And there's the bimetallic strip that is uh, effectively tapped at different positions and it's going to push down on that. And there are lots of springs in this breaker. So when you push this down, initially in its set reset position, in its off position, everything is reset to, to catch. And this bit here is the sweet spot. See this, these two bits here? That catch literally... Oh, let me show you. Because I've got one here. Uh, where is it? There it is. It literally just catches on an edge like this, just barely catches by a fraction of a millimetre. And that's what stops it actually tripping in the first place. So when you actually push this down, a couple of things happen. There is a over center lever here. And what the over center is, let me demonstrate over center. If I apply pressure to this and I push it down, as soon as that little link there goes over the center, it latches. That's the whole click latching on sort of thing. But there's actually a spring in this blue handle here. That means that if there's any reduction in pressure here, it will let it go and it will flip itself off. Um, when you actually do push it down, you can see the whole contact block is just lifting up and down. It's not actually closing properly. The reason for that is that this catch here has a little indent at the back and that literally is the pivot point when this is in position, it's literally at the pivot point of that contact there. So as you push this down and it tries to push that down, as long as that catch is in the correct position, it can hinge that contact down to make a physical electrical connection. But as soon as that trips, it basically pulls that pivot point away and the contact's natural position then is up, which is why when it trips, you can't jam it on by holding that handle down. So let's do that. Let's um, get up close and personal with this circuit breaker. I'll probably be over zooming here. Maybe I should. Uh, I think that's going to be clear enough. It's it's well zoomed in. I'm going to deliberately trip this while I'm holding this down. Now you can see already that as I uh, pull this lever down, the that little tab is trying to get past that, but it can't get past that, which is good because that's what lets it latch. And as I push, it levers that contact down until it locks in place, right? I'm going to trip the mechanism and you'll see that contact go up, but I'm going to hold this switch down to try and stop it uh, tripping, but it doesn't. It's basically because that uh, little cantilever arm has tripped over, uh, it's pulled the pivot pin away and the contact's gone back. And now when I lift the, let the thing go up slowly, it resets and now it's ready to reset the circuit breaker. Other things worth mentioning in here. Uh, what's the best way up for this? Now, here's an odd thing. I didn't realise until now that this contact here has an arc shoot and the idea is that there's a copper plate goes up the back of that hold on let me show you it here's the arc shoot and the arc shoot is a series of metal plates and it's designed to quench the arc there's a plate that guides it up it's the contact plate here and there's the contact and there's the metal plate that runs up it's interesting to note these are all the same shape and all the different circuit breakers there must be a bit of science to it and the theory here is that when you draw an arc, it will follow the, it seems to be a magnetic effect. It will tend to follow the metal up into the arc chute up here and get quenched. Now, I thought that the way circuit breakers mounted, they were mounted, well, they're, they're mounted horizontally, but they're also mounted vertically. And I thought the vertical mounting, that would be pointing up the way, but I'm wrong. It turns out that when you put these into a panel, they're actually that way. So the contact is at the top and the arc then has to get pulled down um, by gravity. 
or you'd think hot air would make it want to sort of linger up here, but apparently it does uh, follow that round and into the quenching plates. And there is a little air vent out the bottom here. Hmm, tricky. Uh, anything else worth mentioning about this? I will say that the, if you look at the super high current circuit breaker, the 32 amp one, uh, sorry, the 63 amp one, they've got this big, huge piece of braid going from the bimetallic strip where it's literally, it's op tacked on. The bimetallic strip doesn't, it's not as if it's tacked onto the bimetallic strip. It's right at the end. So it's the, it must be the heat of the braid and the actual assembly itself that uh, heats that bimetallic strip. But at the bottom, to get that current, but I'll still allow the contact flexibility, they've got the braid uh, has been center spot welded onto the uh, contact here, and then both ends have been spot welded either side of that metal bus bar that's been wound round the solenoid. So on the subject of the different type ratings, oh, there's a there's a snapshot of all the clutter around my bench. I really must remember this new camera does that. I've not worked out how to disable that feature, the, the clutter feature. Be, be ashamed of my clutter. Uh, I'm not ashamed of the clutter. A cluttered bench is uh, the sign of a cluttered mind. That is right. But um, the type rating... When you, the bimetallic, the, the reason there's a bimetallic strip, I'm going to turn this up the other way because I just like it up the other way. The reason there's a bimetallic strip and the coil is that when a short circuit occurs and it's a very high current fault, uh, the coil is the bit that trips it, but it usually takes like, in the case of a type B, it's five times the rated current. Type C, it's about 10 times. And the type uh, D, which is for super spiky loads like big, huge switch mode power supplies or welders with big transformers, that uh, typically has a, a trip current of up to about 20 times the actual rating of the circuit breaker. So you can't really rely just on the magnetic for simple overload protection. This is where the biometallic strip comes in. And this means that if you look it up online, you'll find there is a trip curve where as the fault current gradually increases, say for instance, it's a 32 amp circuit breaker and the current increases to like, say 40 amps, it won't trip immediately. In fact, there might be a tolerance that might not trip at all and it will be affected by ambient temperature conditions, but it will trip after a certain time if it does trip, just by that gradual increase in temperature on the uh, bimetallic strip. And when that happens, it just pushes down on that. Likewise, the solenoid just pushes up on that. Either way, it makes that tilt. But this thing's full of springs. It's quite complex. I'd love to show you the open one operating, but I can't because the pressure's so high on the components that they need supported at both ends. And if you do try to do that, they just ping out. Hold on, I'll try it, right? I'll zoom down and I'll try operating this by holding things in position. Oh, it did kind of work. Right, so that's the, the contact closing. But uh, it does require uh, that uh, thing at the back. Uh, let me show you the other bit. Let me get this out. There's a, I don't know if you can see this. I'll zoom down. Can you see the little metal strip at the back? That is the bit that hooks into here to allow it to actually lever up and down. And it is really potently, it really it takes a lot of force. There's lots of springs in this. Um, so this bit actually doesn't, it kind of pushes it down, but a lot of that is down to the metal mechanism here allowing the give of the contact. It's a complicated thing. It's amazingly complicated given that this thing costs very, very little. You're talking about, oh, you're talking about three pounds, for even in the UK, buying from a prominent seller, you're going to get, it's only going to be about three or four pounds, one of these circuit breakers. And look what you're getting, the complexity inside. And these things are rated, well, this one is rated to break. A fault current of 6,000 amps. That's what's designed to interrupt in the case of a, a short circuit. But there we have it. Uh, interesting things, much more complicated than you might think. And they're mostly foolproof in the sense that you can't just basically try and force them to stay on, they will uh, 
progressively cause problems. Uh, they will trip out internally. There is another thing that can go wrong with these. You can get the contacts burning up inside, and when they get hot, the heat inside the unit, particularly if you've got a bad connection onto this, will cause random false tripping. But that's it. Uh, very interesting, very neat inside, and well worth taking apart. These are standard miniature circuit breakers.